we're gonna start. Um, I'm just gonna open a pie charm. Okay, so we're gonna go with a new project. This is uh, week four. And we're gonna make sure we select the right pie chart, right? So 3.6, I have another one, but whatever you have, these computers have both. So if you are happy with 2.7, select 2.7. If it's not, 3.6 it is. Create, open a new windows. Maximize that. Wait to wait for the project to be created, and that's pretty much it. All right. So the project is created. I'm just gonna go for today. We're gonna have one file. Uh, last time we had two. This one we're just gonna have one. You're just gonna call it main. Nothing fancy. Okay, so let's start. Let's start with some comments. The rational operations are used <coughs> to create Boolean expression. So what is a Boolean expression? Is something generate true or false, right? Yes or no, one or zeros, lights on, lights off, all right? Whatever makes you happy. So true or false, right? All right. So here is the a general format of the if statement. So making decision for making decision, we need an if statement. If statement, it has a condition. That condition has to be boolean, means it has to generate the answer either true or false, in order to check. In Python, obviously. So that's how you write it. If you recall, for uh, modules, we write def define a module, name of a module, and call them, and just write this statement. Here we're gonna write if your condition, whatever it is, and column. So we call that if cloud. And here, same rule. So you have indentation for space and statements. Statement, statement, etc. So whatever it is. So the idea here is this. If this condition is true, we go ahead and do those statements. Otherwise, we're just going to skip or jump. Right? If you recall, we just go through it. We have another way of doing that. It's called an alternative dual condition. Right? What's that? It means we check a condition if it's true. We do a bunch of statements. If it's not true, we're going to do other statements. So either or is alternative. Right? So the way it is, we check the condition, and uh, so let's say it's the same thing as the first one. So this is no change here. And we're going to use the terminology else. So what happens here is the program goes and check this condition, and if it's true, it go ahead and do those statements. If it's not true, what's going to happen? It's going to jump to this side and do the rest. So either or, or. Note here is both of them cannot be run at the same time. That's why they call it alternative. Right? Either or. 
And there's one complicated one which is recovered. It is called that nested conditioning decision. As I showed you, it is good for your marks or as a decision inside another decision. So it's a multiple decision, but it's one inside another. That's why they call it nested in a sense. And uh, you check your condition first. Obviously, it's the same thing for all. So this is your dual, right? So I'm writing a dual. <clears throat> here is two way of doing it. So in the else part, you can check another condition. So you come here. Pay attention to the indentation. If you recall, the index are important. I'll talk to you about it in a second. I think that's enough. So what's happening here? This is if, so it's a dual, which is on the else part, I have another condition checked. So I have if and else, and in this else, instead of a bunch of condition, I have another if and else inside, as you can see. And inside that one also I have another one. So it's one inside another. There is two ways of doing this in Python. One is this. So you write if and else. And so but basically if the condition is true here, you're going to do this. If it's not, and you just leave the whole thing. If it's not true, you go to the else section. And in the else section, you don't have a bunch of a statement anymore. You have another two, another condition to check. So if it's not, the first one is not true, then you go and check the second one. If that's true, you do this. If the second condition is not true, you're going to go do this second else, which is belong to this. If you take a look at this line, it kind of align the ones that actually belong to each other. So these two belong to each other. These two belong to each other. So there's no way you can run this unless that one is not true. This is one way of writing it. Um, Python kind of short form this. So this is a little bit looks ugly or crazy or is log indentation. Unless you need to write a bunch of statement here. Let's say you want to print before you check the condition or something. This is unnecessary. So the, the other way of doing this is this. Maybe you like that better. There's not all, only one way of doing this. We're going to do this. So we're going to go if condition. So you have your statement. And here we're going to kind of mesh it together. So we're going to go LF. So it's an else if together. Right? Instead of doing that, right, which is kind of create the unnecessary indentation, what if you have 10 of them? You're going to just go all the way to the wall, right? It's just if you don't need it, you don't need to. You can do this. And here you check your condition. It's basically else if, but they kind of, that's how they do it here. In some languages, they actually write else if, right? And you can always end up with else. So the dual alternatives is one thing, but the nested is also other things. Both of them, at the end of the day, they end up with else. So the else is the last 
thing you have to consider. Time to lock that. Okay. So let's warm up below with whatever we learned last week and we're gonna integrate what we learned right now to it. So we're gonna start with the module. So comments is enough. Let's start coding. Mm, what are we doing here? So let's uh, define a module <coughs> called average or get the average, whatever you wanna call it. And what it does, it's, let's say get three tests from the users and get the average of it. So this is we did before. So integer input and third. The, okay, let me get rid of this guy here. Is too much space for no reason. Here we go. I think that's much better to see. A little bit up. Maybe we should turn off the light. You guys can see. Yeah, it's good. All right. Enter the first test. Test two. So nothing new here. If you did your labs and practices, you should be familiar with what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna do it fast. All right. So we get all these three and, oh, sorry guys, here we go. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna calculate the average of it as a variable and we're gonna use a parentheses because of the arithmetic operation priority. Divided by, let's say 3.0. And here we're just getting the average. And when the, the average score is comma, we're going to format it to, let's say, two significant digits. So we're going to get the average comma, two significant digits right there. So nothing new here, right? So we have a function or module, we just run it and we get those. Now we're gonna test this. We're gonna find out <clears throat> and we're gonna say if the average now, we don't know what it is, is greater than equal than 90. We're gonna print congratulations or congrats. Let's keep it casual. And print this is a great average, obviously. And um, that's it for now. We're going to add to it as we go. So, what happens is we're going to get the three inputs from the user, get the average of it, print the average. And we just check the condition. This is only runs if the students get greater than 90 in average, right? Otherwise, we don't see these two anymore. Let's try it out and see everything's fine. So we're going to go here, and we're just going to call our module or function. If you don't call it, the whole thing not going to run anyway. So you're going to go there and run all that. So let me just run my main um, right-click here. Here we go. So I'm running it. This is my console here. Let's say start with 50, 60, and 70. Obviously, the average of these are 60. And as you can see, you see the average, but it doesn't show the messages. So let's now go and test, some, test it with something bigger. 90, 95, 89. Period. So the average is 91. 0.33, so I'm keeping two significant digit, and here we go. Now you see the message. So the way is, if this is true, you're gonna run this. If it's not, 
you're not doing it. So this is your conditioning or if statement. Now I'm going to make that, pay attention to the indentation, right? Python, the most problematic part in this case is indentation. If you can see, there is one here to define whatever is, is inside this module. There is another one here for if statement, right? So you see, it's just two in it. Be careful with that. So let's say I want to make this into the dual alternative decision making. So we're going to make this else. If it's not greater than 90, I am going to print something insulting the law. It's not that bad, though. All right. So let's see what happens. So these two cannot run together. So either that or this, right? So let's go 20, 50, and 70. Here we go. It's the average and your average student. So this doesn't make sense because less than 50, you failed, right? So let's make this better. So let's have multiple conditions that you can check. Um, the point here is either that or this. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to say, okay, either, either you're greater than 90 or if it's, you're not. If you are not greater than 90, you are, should be between 50 to 90. That basically tells you you're an average student. And if it's not between that also, I want to say you failed the course. And So let's do that. So we check for the 90. This time we said else if or you can mesh it together let's do both i'm gonna do it this way and um we're gonna first that's the difference that uh, you can separate those and not separate those one you can say print you are not your average greater than 90. so the idea is so either your average is greater than 90 or is not, right? So if it's greater than 90, we're not going to do the rest of it. We leave. If it's not greater than 90, we print right away you are not greater than 90. Then we check for two other conditions. So we're going to say if. So now the average is less than 90. And if you remember, yeah. If you remember, we can use and. So there's two expressions I want to check. It has to be less than 90 and greater than 50. When I use and, means both of them has to be true in order to make the whole expression true. And look at the indentation. I have an error because this has to go in. And here we're going to say you are average student. So in that case... That's the average. And here, if it's not that, guess what? You failed. See you next semester. That's true. There we go. And that's it. So let's test it out. So let's go with three cases, 50, 60, and 70. This is average 60. So it doesn't run that you, congrats, you have a great average, but it runs this. So your average is not greater than 90, we know that, but you are an average student. So we run this, not that way. So let's go with something more dramatic. Let's go 30, 40, and 50. So the average is 40. You are not greater than 90 for sure. And you fail to see you next semester. So you see how that works? So it's alternative, either or that. Or so the point here is if you separate these two, is because I want to print this in both conditions no matter what. If I don't have that, I mesh it together. We're going to use the else if. We're going to show you in a second. 
So just want to comment that before I move forward, which is I showed you earlier in the class. So if you have the first expression true and where is the end? Here we go. Obviously, if, as I told you, we use two ands, not one. So, in order, when you check in two condition and more, or two expression and more, in order to be the whole expression become true, all of them has to be true. If one of them, I'm just making an example in one, uh, in two expression, but um, yeah, so false, false. Make sure you understand this. It shows questions like that. Uh, false and the only way it's false right so this is for your ands and let's since I did it let's do it for or as well so if you have true or true like two expression together that turns that to true true and false true False and true, true, and the only way this becomes false is just a reminder, right? False. All right. So this is the condition, and you have multiple conditions to check. In this case, we're using and. So in order this to be true, both of them has to be true. Okay. Um, let's talk about comparing strings, which is I have to cover. So let's say I have two names. So I'm going to comment this, calling this get average to not run it every time. That's a beauty of the module, right? So when you don't need to run it, you don't call it. So instead of running this code or program every single time, I just comment that. So the whole thing is clean, ready to go. So let's say we have two names. Mark a name to mark. Right? So I want to check that these two names are the same or not. This is really <coughs> problematic in many, many languages. So you have to go through the specific functions or methods or whatever it is. Here is really easy. So we're going to check it that way. So we're going to say, okay, if name one equal to equal to name two. So why do use two equal? Because one of them is already taken. We're not setting the name two to name one. Right? So this is check. This is important. If name one is equal to name two. And basically generates Boolean expression. What I mean by that is this guy is either tell you true or false, yes or no. So let's check it. So this is comparing string here. Uh, we're going to say print. So if it, this is true, we're going to say the names are the same. And else, if it's not true, I'm going to say the names. Okay, so let's make it interesting instead of doing that. Let's just want it to make sure everything works properly. In this case, you're going to give me the names are the same, right? It's exactly the same. And it gives me that. Let's just change that to Mary, let's say, and see how that goes. Oh, not, not that. Sorry, cancel. And you can see the names are not the same. Anymore. So is it either or not? 
make this a little bit more interesting. So we're gonna make the user now enter the first name, and I'm gonna do the lazy word, the copy paste. And in that case, I ask two names. I compare them. If they're the same, I'll let the user know. If it's not, I also let them know. So let's say, and question, is these two are the same? No. Python is case sensitive. And capital and lower, it's matters. We're going to have a string manipulation, like another class, that we learn how to deal with this. We're going to learn if it's all capital, we can make it lowercase. If it's lowercase, we can uppercase and such. So you have to manipulate those if you don't want to have case sensitive. It doesn't cover the case sensitivity. So it has to be exact the same. So. All right. So um, this is what it is. I am going to do two more I'm going to do one more program, a little bit more complex, and then we take the break. So let's say I am going to define a module, call it cells. Okay, before I go with that, I'm going to make this uh, module itself. I don't want to run it, so I'm just going to call it string uh, compare and guess what in order to put all of them into the module I just gonna select that press tab on my keyboard done so I don't need to run it every time unless I call it all right so let's move on So we're going to define something called a cells coda. And this is what it is. It has an input. Let's say cells is at whatever cells you have. And simply check that if cells coda is greater than or equal to 50,000. In that case, I'm going to create a Boolean variable. So this is interesting. This is not do anything. It just tells you it is or not. That's a module. Just check that number. And if it is, it gives me true. If it's not, you just have false. So simple, right? There is a cells comes in. If it's greater than 50,000, we generate the Boolean variable, set it to true, means that's met. And if it's not less than 50,000, you generate false. I am going to return this value to whenever you call it. So we're going to have here, make sure you don't write the return here, right? Because if you write the return here, the return only runs if the uh, cells code are met variable set to be false. So return is going to go and run here. So you're going to be careful with this. Indentation in Python can get you if you're not familiar with it or not having enough practice. Here we go. So we're returning that. Right? Simple module. Now, I'm going to write another module called cells. And I'm going to ask the user, let's call it coda, integer, input. So we're going to get that number from the users, but this is happens in another module, right? We're going to call this one when I need it. So input. We're going to say, please enter the cells coda. And let's make it more interesting. Let's get the person who entered this, their cells also. So we're going to say name. 
this one doesn't need the integer so we're just gonna go input your name all right so we get the name and the sales of that person this is a salesman as a they have to sell us fifty thousand so now I'm simply gonna do this note this this might complicate things uh, if you don't get it I'm gonna make an example this module generate boolean right so either the output could be true or false nothing there so here I can do this interestingly I said if cells coda So what happens here is this, right? This guy generates only, so either true and false, and I can use the whole thing, the output, right here, because if statement also just accept true and false, so I don't need to check condition here. Either here comes true, which is going to run this, or it comes false, which is I don't run this. So this is an interesting part. I can use the output boolean to run it through that if statement. Okay, so so either I get true out of this or false. So if it's true, we get you met the coda. Now, interestingly, I'm gonna check another condition. So if you met the coda and if the name, I'm doing the string comparison, which is we just learned uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, we're gonna say if the name is equals to Hesa. Right? I am going to print. Let's say our last year also met the code out, so they're going to give me a bonus. You met your cells coda to consecutive. Let's go to the next line and write it. Years. And you win a, let's go next line, France vacation, whatever I want to go. All right. So what happens here is, let's say, this is everyone going to see. So it checks it. If it's true, right, we're going to let the user know you made the self code up. Then we check another condition. It says, okay, the name is Sesam. If it's Sesam, the last year he did sales, we give them a bonus. I give send them to travel or something. Right there. And uh, if it's not, so we're gonna go else. Where should I write else? Here, right? I'm checking this condition. Oh, sorry. Back. So here we're gonna write else. It's simply, you're just going to do a tap on the shoulder kind of thing. It says, good job. Oh. Keep it up. Right? So these two together, these two and anything else, just we check if you met the coda. If you don't, doesn't matter, right? If I'm a sound like walking in and I didn't met the coda, doesn't need to actually check for the vacation or anything. So now, pay attention. I'll go right else here. Why here? This else is belong to this if. So this is a dual alternative for these two. So either that or this. This is uh, dual for itself. So this and that. If you pay attention, you see the line. It helps you to track things, right? So else. What should I write here? Does anyone guess? So we check if you meet the self co cells code. Are you gonna print you meet the cell? Meet the cells. Okay. Typo. 
sales coda. And here, if you're not, what we're going to do is say, you did not, right? So this has happened inside the other one. So it, as far as you're not going into that, you're never going to see those. And let's say this. So we're going to say, okay, if we didn't met the self coda, I'm doing the more complicated case that we see how complicated things can get. I'll walk you through it again when I'm done coding. Let's say there's two salesmen, Tony and Alex, right? Poor guys. If okay, so if we don't, oh, that's that's wrong. Typo. If they don't meet the sales code out, we're gonna do this. If it's Tony or Alex, uh, let's say they already not meeting the code for two consecutive year, and that's the third one. We're gonna fire them. Since I'm a not, I don't like to meet employees. I'm just gonna do it through the program. So I'm gonna let them. They're fired because they're gonna cry. So we're gonna say name, whatever name they put in. I don't know. And said you are fired. <laughs> yeah. And let's say. Let's use LF. If the name is let's say Robert. Robert just didn't meet last year, not two consecutive year, just didn't meet the code of last year. We are going to, oh, there's no parentheses. Sorry, I just confused it with another program right there. Oh, Robert. What happens here is we're going to give them a warning. So, so this is... So before I, let me clean that up and I'll walk you through it one more time, see what's happening. All right, pause there. Before we get to run this, so we did this, let's just uh, quickly run this, make sure everything's fine and then I'll move forward. So here, where should I call it? It's all the way to the back here. I'm gonna call cells. I'm going to run it. So let's do all three cases. First, let's meet that self code, 60,000. And let's put Adam. And it tells me you meet the sales code. Good job. Keep it up. So basically, where it shows is this. So what happens here is. I ask for these two. I check the sales code. In this case, it gives me true because it's more than 50,000, which is here. And then it's true. It tells me that I met the sales code and check for the name. The name is Adam, so that doesn't is not applicable. It jumps to the alternative, which is else, and pre print good jobs. Keep it up. So right here. So let's do the the other case. So I'm gonna run it again. So this time let's do 60,000, but with my name. So I'm going to do the sum. And in that case, here we go. So we meet the sales code. And since we do that for two consecutive years, I need a space here, obviously. Let me just fix that uh, right there. And you win the France vacation. All right. So in that case, again, we send it up. Generates true, therefore we enter this section of the code. And when you enter, you print this message and then you check for the next condition. So the name it is has some. So instead of jump to the else, which is was the last case, it jump and print this message instead. So this is the true part of the uh, dual alternative uh, conditioning and um, or decision making. Um, the next one will be, let's say, 45, which is less than 50,000. So we're not meeting the coda. 
and in that case uh, we have we have to print this and we check for another condition Tony or Alex so let's go with Alex there we go and I see a problem right so I said you did not meet the sales coda which is true but does not do anything else why because the name is not matched right so let me find out why all right seems nothing wrong so let me do that one more time so 2500 and the Alex it's probably I put space at the beginning or something if you type with the space at the beginning it won't really show properly so space is a character be careful with that so here you go so Tony or Alex when you are in the else section of the code you print that no matter what so either <clears throat> is either Tony or Alex you print the name or is either Robert So in Robert, it's give them a warning right there. Let's say it's none of them. What should I do? You can add another else here and say if it's none of them. In this case, but if it's none of them, we don't do anything. In that case, we're just going to print try to do better. So before, if it's not Tony or Robert or Alex, we just skip the whole section. So we're not doing none of it. Now we have alternatives, so we're going to tell them do better. So in that case, when I'm not meeting the coda, and the name is, I don't know, who else left? Roberto. It just tells you try to do better. Try to go up and down. Try to do this code yourself. Nothing beats that doing it to get what's happening. You have the codes. You have everything to uh, find your flaws and problems. Okay.